And basically that, I won't do it now, but that clips onto that, which is a cast of her waist upwards. And what we do is put all, basically put a layer of wax inside, close them, put plastic in, pour. Yeah, we get a smooth uh, wax body out, which we, we sculpt <laughs> all together. And then, yeah, go from there. It's really bizarre. It's not nice at all, actually. <laughs> it looks really real. But your arm's like twisted sideways and stuff. Yeah, a bit odd. Who do I throw it at? Where's Ben? <laughs> we have Sam who gets her throat ripped out. That's a prosthetic, which is a throat piece which will go around her neck and a plug which is put in. And this will all be coloured to her and her throat literally gets ripped out and blood will gush out. You look gorgeous. Hello. <laughs> Juno will get her leg stabbed. <laughs> Paul, at the start, gets a scaffold pulled through his head. Action. Come in a fight. Uh, made a head for that. And Holly gets her neck ripped out. I just had um, a neck piece just wrapped around with it. It was a gusher. <laughs> And that was quite fun. As well as a compound fracture to her leg. The scene where Holly breaks her leg is actually quite horrific. Everybody grab a corner. We need to move her out of the water. OK? OK. Nice and easy now. It was just a slip on prosthetic of my leg, bones and ligaments, and basically a pump, blood pump. This was the actual prosthetic which was used on Holly which basically is a silicon skin, which was just a slip-on. And we had some bone pieces, which would go in, and basically there was blood tubing coming each way, which would just bleed and bleed and bleed. And as um, Sam tries to push a bone in, which it, it would just slip in like that, blood would just absolutely gush out. No! Ah! Oh, just keep running down, baby! It's brilliant. Just trying to do something a bit different, which has been seen before. Magnificent performance. Bravo. They're cavemen who didn't leave the cave. And they've evolved in this environment over thousands of years. A community of them lived down here as families. And they thrive in this underground environment. They've lost their eyesight. Hello. They have acute hearing and smell and they, they're expert climbers, so they can go up any rock face, you know, and they function perfectly in, in the pitch black, and, and that is their world. And these girls infringe upon their world, and the crawlers are simply defending their territory. The inspiration for the crawlers came from Neil, who was very definite about it. Mm, what a lovely creation here. <laughs> Sorry, he he, he you know. wants some of your log. <laughs> yes, I'm going to tease him with my love. He was sort of saying that basically he wanted them um, to have a slight influence on Nosferatu. We wanted to sort of have a slight vampiric design, but not looking like a vampire. Can I take these out? Oh, they come out. No. <laughs> oh. It was just Could the idea know? of like, if you were going to have these creatures living underground, what would they be? Where would they come from? And elements came into the story of like finding a cave painting as if it was a you know, prehistoric cave painting. And I thought, well, okay, so cavemen, what if they were cavemen and what if they were actually more human? Because to me, making them more human makes them more scary. What did you see? A man. I saw a man. Are you sure? Yes. And it's not the first time. I thought I saw someone before, but now I'm sure. Look, if there is somebody down here, then maybe they can help get us out. He gave me a Photoshop design that he'd done. It was really good, but originally we had huge eyes and we'd done a test which wasn't really what we all wanted. I'm a fire starter. So we basically kept working on sculptures and make it smaller, more human and went with contact lenses and gave a more human quality. Where would you like me? <laughs> um, and it would have taken about about four weeks to lock down the final design that worked better as a prosthetic. What's your back like? <laughs> Pull me off. 
Oh, you fuck it, you fuck it. Oh, you scared me. What an off. Oh, my God, that's brilliant. Your turn. <laughs> <laughs> if a Klingon and, and, and Spock had a child, and it was totally hairless and a bit shorter and quite sinewy and was cousins with Gollum, <laughs> basically what a crawler looks like. It's like the natural born smoker, a weedy, scrawny, um, horrible, dangly thing. We wanted to sort of cross between a creature that lived in a cave, but with a slight sort of change in their bone structure and their spines, and almost like they've evolved one stage into a bat. These creatures have these fantastic ears, which have been created, which is how they survive and, and move around. Their ears are their main sensory part. a few years ago through a friend um, and he invited me to work on a short film with him called Combat which was just fantastic and everybody just jumped in there and done that for a weekend and then he invited me on to Dog Soldiers which was tremendous and then this came up and he said look come come and be a beast. Craig Conway and uh, Les Simpson are my, my, my actors of choice uh, that they have been in every film that I've made one way or another. And it was pretty difficult to get them. It was like, I'm making an all-female ensemble film. Where am I going to get them in? Then it occurred to me, that what if they play the crawlers? And I wasn't sure if they'd be up for it, but they were well up for it. But I also wanted to use them as crawlers because I wanted actors rather than, say, dancers or whatever to play the part. I wanted to bring something to the crawlers. That's because I was brought up in the art of ballet. I think you just got to have imagination and a, um, a bit of an excitement for doing something that's out of the ordinary and you allow all of the circumstances around you to create the illusion of the character within that. Because they, they, the makeup that they have allows them to express themselves fully, both physically and you know, facial expressions. Do, do your movement with your forehead. It's oh, complete that's great. Movement. That's wonderful. To let yourself go um, in something like this, you, you have to trust your body. And, you, and although you have to be conscious of what you're doing and choreograph certain things, there just has to be a sense of freedom. I think that's exactly how you, you, you know, you can confidently pull off being a beast. <laughs> Putting actors in those suits is just, you know, the best, best of both worlds. Puppet's got a head like a ping pong ball. Puppet's got a head like a ping pong ball. Puppet's got a head like ping pong ball. Ping pong ball. Ping pong ball. Ping pong 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 ball. Ping pong ping pong ping pong ping pong ping pong ping pong ball. Ping, ping, pong, ping, 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 dong. <laughs> it's fantastic that, to play this undercover actor. You know, I can go on, do what I want, and um, create something which I hope is entertaining and frightening and a bit off the wall, and then I can sit back and know that nobody on this planet is going to go, oh, that, that's him. He, he plays that piece. And that's great for me, because I, I like the kind of anonymity of it all. It's nice. Yeah, I'm out of here. To make up a crawler every day was about a three and a half hour job. We'd come in, start with the face, and then basically put the contact lenses in. Good day. You see all right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. No. <laughs> Raw. Teeth in, and then full body paint job, which would take about two hours. In order to um, to apply the makeup and the veins and the prosthetics, uh, we've all had to um, shave every part of our bodies, which is. Uh, Rather embarrassing. Oh, not not at this time. Why not? It's too early. It's too early. Why not? Why? You come in by cock out. Yeah, he's a bit sort of. Is he naked? Yeah, we're doing his nads and stuff. So? Originally, it took about five hours to be made up. So it's ten past seven when I was picked up this morning. It's now. What time is it? It's now twenty-five past three but now they've dropped that down to three and a half hours. So it's somewhere between three and a half to four hours, and then throughout the day, there's constant touch-ups. Basically, we tried to give them all a distinct personality. Um, there's one that's called Scar, who gets sliced, and he was a real vicious, nasty creature, so we sort of gave him these lip pieces that pulled down his lips, almost like a dog snarling. He always had that sour face. <laughs> 
females, we gave them a slightly witchy, sour look, whilst they didn't want any good-looking girl callers, so they're all ugly. I can still see that it's me. I saw a picture of myself. Well, it's different when you're looking in the mirror, but when I saw a picture of myself, I could still see my face. And the rest of them just had little, sort of quirky, different-shaped ears. Some looked angrier, some looked a bit dopey. <laughs> I made a deliberate point of keeping the crawlers away from the girls. I just wanted to see what the effect would be. Action! I think I found the way through! It's been very mysterious. We haven't been allowed to see them at all until the scene. I was saying to um, the girls, I said, I feel like I'm actually, you know, making a drama because we hadn't come across the crawls and they come into the film quite late. We knew he was around, sort of on on location, and we kind of, you know, some of the girls would kind of be hiding out, seeing if they could kind of catch a glimpse of him. Well, it was bloody good for me. I got closer to the women than I've ever been before. Didn't quite get my teeth into them but they didn't make me drool at the mouth, so to speak. Wonderful. But I actually think it was a really good idea because it, it did build up um, an anticipation and adrenaline. Oh, sorry, I was shoving him in that hole that, that was, we're about to that go. That was right? his, that was his arse, mate. Right? Put him in the hole, look at that. Hairy. Please, guys. Please, guys. Put who? Hey. Are you, are you happy to What do you want to know? No, I don't know. What's behind the mask? There's a crawl yeah. outside. Yeah. Happy to fall. Did you read your script? <laughs> it, was, it was me. Did you read your script? They were getting really, really nervous about meeting the crawlers for the first time. They didn't know what to expect. They hadn't seen any pictures, any of them had no idea what they were going to look like. I don't think love is going to um, blossom from this meeting. I can't imagine. It's like your, your worst blind date ever, isn't it? I mean, imagine if this fucker turned away your door. They just scared the living daylight out of me. We were supposed to stand still. I was screaming at the other side of the room <laughs> within three seconds. They just snapped. They weren't running off into the dark screaming. They built for, for weeks. They'd been building up this image of being these really hard ass, you know, tough as uh, tough as nails girls. As soon as the crawler shows up, it's hands in the air and running away like a big bunch of pansies. <laughs> come out people go oh right right that's interesting but because it was in the scene the girls were expecting something and didn't know what to expect and of course you arrive and they get a shock and you kind of get a shock as well <laughs> and it and it was just brilliant it was fantastic to be hidden away from them and uh, a lot of fun a lot of fun and uh, fighting them is a whole nother thing it was actually really difficult because like, I was fighting a man you know I was like actually getting wrestling a guy and the, that was hard work. Action. There, that's it, yes. There, good. OK, hold it there. And uh, fighting on that sand, it was like glass, just cutting your skin. So whenever we uh, crawl about on all fours and uh, fight on the floor, everybody's getting lacerated and it's burning <laughs> and it's taking our skin away. <laughs> Soon we'll all look like crawlers permanently. I had beautiful skin before I came here. I was almost offered a modelling contract with Clinique. But now look at me. I've gone to wrecking room within days. But at the end, I was sort of like, wow, yeah, you did that, girl. Good on you. <laughs> Here you come, um, and Hopefully the audience will find them creepy. That was one thing that I wanted, was that they'd look at them and go, really be creeped out, because they're quite nasty, horrible-looking things. No hair, sinewy, sort of gaunt. Just, just hopefully to be a bit creeped out by them, basically. I'm absolutely over the moon with the way that the crawlers have turned out. They are they're incredibly physical and virile um, and fierce looking, but the, you know, and their the colouring and everything, and it's all to do with, with, with being in the pitch dark and what, what, what's, the, what's your worst nightmare underground, and meeting these, these guys is pretty much your worst nightmare. <laughs> The worst part of working on this film is, without a doubt, being very cold and very wet and very tired. Just being cold, getting so filthy that you need about two showers. 
your social life kind of doesn't exist when you're doing this film. In the cold water. <laughs> Lying in cold water. <laughs> I wouldn't wish that on anyway. <laughs> How long it takes to shower all the muck off at the end of the day. <laughs> Having to perform scenes with great passion while being freezing cold down to the bone. Sometimes at the end of the day, you know, you've got tears and blood and all this stuff all over your face and you kind of just looked in the mirror and just went, did I do that? Oh, but it's been wicked. So, so good. Such a love. I normally don't like the shooting very much. It's sort of stressful and busy and lots of things can go wrong. But it's been a real pleasure working with, with this bunch of people for the last seven weeks. The best part of working on this film has been the people, without a doubt. <laughs> going to Scotland and uh, doing quite water rafting. <laughs> the people, really good fun. Uh, I had, uh, I've had such a laugh. Please please start. Please. Please. Okay. The best thing is to, is to see kind of, you know, a friend making a film and actually being on a set with a lot of people that I know um, and, and seeing everybody giving a lot of effort towards making a, a good movie. Every day of the shoot, it's just been, it's just been a blast. Something's happened, some, something funny. How about this? <laughs> You know, something spectacular, there's been a great stunt, or, you know, just uh, uh, just some great dramatic sequence or something like that. Things just falling into place along the way. I start thinking about what I'm going to do next, because I want to be on a, another film set by Christmas, in an ideal world. Because um, I can't get enough of it. It's just the best job in the universe, and um, I've loved every second of it. He has always got some, like, a little twist in what he does. And I think this one just doesn't stop. It's a bit relentless and a bit off the wall. And Neil's just got a, a magnificent imagination, which I think um, that's what this film is. It's an exploration of his mind. And uh, I don't want to be in his mind, because it's scary. No, I think that's good enough. Good enough. 